Here I am, I'm back. If you're here, it's probably because you're interested in working in Japan or because you love me and you watch all my videos. In this case, I love you too. Thank you. So today I want to talk about my experience, my job here in Japan, generalizing a little bit, but you know guys, I cannot speak for everyone and everything. Let's get started with how I found the job. Definitely it's easier to find a job in Japan than in Italy. We cannot deny this, guys. I came here on a student visa and on a student visa you are allowed to work up to 28 hours a week. I was studying for 20 hours and as soon as I arrived, like after three weeks, I found my part-time job and I was teaching English. It was a company that had English schools only for adults, no children. And I did this for five months, 20 hours a week. After these five months, I was offered a full-time position with a visa sponsorship. If you come on a student visa, you can get a visa sponsorship. Guys, if you want me to make a video about visas in Japan and how to get a work visa, just leave a comment below because it's kind of like a lot of requirements and stuff and this is not the right video to talk about it. So. I was offered a visa sponsorship, a full-time position. I got my visa that is valid for three years and I started working full-time as a recruiter. My company had, currently it has seven schools. So my job was to find, interview, hire or reject English teachers. It was actually very interesting. I got to meet a lot of people from all over the world and it was mind-opening, it was really interesting. But I know this is not why you're here today. You want to know the juicy part about working in Japan because I know that the work environment in Japan is worldwide famous because it's hard. I might not be the best person to talk about it because my company was a little bit strange. It was not the typical Japanese company. Most of the co-founders were Japanese, but there was an American co-founder and like 50% of the staff were foreigners. But I think I can share some, some things that I noticed, my experience and some things that actually shocked me. Thing number one that I had to get used to is the time off, paid time off. In Europe, ah, we have a lot of vacations, paid holiday. I think minimum is like 22 days, but usually you have 30 days a year, right? Even more, depending on how long you work, right? Here in Japan, usually you have 10. And when you have more, maybe 15, let's say, you rarely take all the time off. That's why usually you see a lot of very young Japanese tourists, college students, because they have time. Or you see like old people, retired people, middle-aged people, working people, cannot take time off. Usually they can take maximum 10 days back to back a year. You can imagine, like from Japan, it's kind of hard to go to Europe or America to go too far. You cannot even take two weeks, 10 days maximum. They really don't have a lot of vacation, really not. I know it's normal in Japan, but for me it was kind of like hard not being able to go home maybe twice a year, like in the summer and for Christmas and stay a decent amount of time. I couldn't do that. It was, ah, it's something you need to be prepared for if you want to work in Japan for a Japanese company. I mean, if you work for an Italian company, an American company, rules might change. Second thing, this is, but, you know, sick leave, like when you are sick, you go to the doctor, the doctor writes down that you are sick and you can stay at home and get paid usually. Of course, uh, depending on your job, it might be easier or a little harder and you might have more days or less days, but usually you do have sick leave in Europe. In Japan, it's not a given. Usually people go to work even if they have a fever, unless they're really feeling super bad, they go to work. And sometimes if you cannot go to work because you're too sick and you have to stay home and rest, they will take those days that you're home from your paid holidays. So if you had 10 days off a year, but you have a fever for three days, like you have to skip three days, then you only have seven days a year for your vacation. Ah, it's not the easiest for Europeans at least. Because in America, I, I'm, I talked to Brian and of course they do have more days than Japan But in Europe we have more days <laughs> Yeah, anyways, you need to get used to it If you're sick, suck it up and go to work or be ready to give up your holidays 
Another difference is flexibility. In general, Japanese companies are kind of strict regarding punctuality. Of course, depending on the job, it can be very strict even in Italy, but sometimes you can kind of like take maybe five minutes. You come five minutes late, you work five more minutes. It's not the end of the world. In Japan, it's, it's strict. You must come in time on the dot and well, you, you, you don't know when you will leave, but not for my company. At my company, I didn't really have to do overtime. Sometimes I would stay a little bit more, but I wouldn't say that it's a company where you need to do overtime, no. But in a lot of Japanese companies, you do have to do to work overtime a lot hours every day. I've had a lot of students and friends who work for Japanese companies. It's kind of hard. It depends on the company a lot. In Japan, they say that there are two kinds of companies, white companies and black companies. The white companies are kind of like the modern companies where you don't have to work overtime. You can take your time off. If you work overtime, you get paid extra money. Black companies, though, even though things are changing, there are a lot of black companies in Japan still. When you work for a black company, be ready to spend your life working at that company. Wake up, you go to the office, and you stay there all day, all evening, part of the night. I know people who start working at 9 a.m. and they finish at 11 p.m. almost every day. And they're not even complaining. It's normal for them. They take an average of like seven days off a year. Sometimes even on the weekend, they do have to work. Yeah, the, the money the money in Japan is good. Salaries are higher compared to Italy. I don't think they're higher compared to America, but the cost of living and salary, it, it's pretty good. I, can, I, I don't want to say that the money's not good, but for me, working at a Japanese traditional company, time-wise, it wouldn't be sustainable. It's too time consuming. I don't want to live to work, I want to work to live right the second thing that is pretty common at japanese companies is the seniority thing to level up to get a promotion you must work at the company for a certain amount of time it's really rare to see young people who have a nice position a managerial position at the company or like in Japan, usually they don't really give promotions depending solely on merit. You have to have the time and age on your side. I feel that in America, definitely, but even in Italy a little bit more, it's more about how good you are. If you're smart, if you're talented, then you might level up. I feel that in Japan, sometimes it's like a no. Doesn't matter how good you are, how skilled you are, how talented, you need to wait. 20 years, 30 years. Uh, a third thing is like that seniority thing, you have to treat your boss like, of course it's your boss, but in Japan it's like, you, your boss. Things are changing, especially in the last five years. For me, I've never experienced that. There was no seniority thing in my company. Luckily, I wouldn't have liked it. So that's all for today. If you have other questions, specific questions, leave a comment below if you want to know about the visa situation. If I receive enough comments, I will make a video if you're interested in it. If you're just watching this video because of me, probably this was not the most interesting video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was interesting and useful maybe. I'll see ya. Subscribe. How is it to work in Japan, baby? KGKT. All right, Give me a kiss. Me. Do you want to show the audience how you look and dress are dressed right now? No. But I still kissed her. Bye, baby boy. Hey, what are you doing? You're handsome.